Okay. I've been asked by several people now to do some demonstrations on how to calculate beam stresses. So this is the first of these. This is going to be in two parts, so make sure you uh, uh, view the second part if you like the first part. And I want to start by describing the problem. We've got a beam here that's pinned on both ends. It's got a force right in the middle, and uh, the beam is six feet long. Now I know not everybody watching these videos is in the United States and so uh, a lot of the viewers, a lot of you out there are going to be more familiar with the metric system. Because the United States still uses the English system for a lot of calculations, I'm going to do at least part of the videos with that. Um, yes, it's kind of an antiquated system and uh, I, I suspect we're going to be getting away from it, but for right now um, I'm going to still use it sometimes. So the requirement is find a force F so that the maximum stress is less than or equal to 10,000 PSI, that's 10,000 pounds per square inch. All right. In order to do this, we're going to need a cross section. The cross sections are going to look like this. Let's see if I can do this right. There's it's four inches. And that's, let's see if I can straighten this out here. And that's closer. There are four inches. And four inches is pretty close to 100 millimeters. It's about 102 millimeters. Cross section's hollow, and the walls are 0 0.20 inches thick. Now that's about five millimeters, four millimeters, somewhere in that neighborhood. All right, and the, so to get started, we're going to need the governing expression for normal stress in a beam. Normal stress due to bending. So we know this, this is 10,000 psi. We're going to have to figure out the moment, y we're going to get from geometry of the cross section, and i we're going to get from geometry of the cross section. Now I want to take just a moment at first here to talk about I. This is the area moment of inertia. When you look at the stiffness of a beam, its resistance to bending, there are uh, three things that uh, play into it. First is the length, the second is the cross-sectional shape, and the third is the material constants, which is um, elastic modulus. So for, let's basically break that down into two categories. There is stiffness of the beam due to geometry and stiffness of the beam due to its material. This, I, is the stiffness due to the cross-sectional shape. That's part of the geometry. As an example here, I've got a what, what amounts to something like a ruler. I've got the dimensions written on the back. It's 27 millimeters wide. It's 4 millimeters thick. Okay? If I bend it, if I apply a moment to each end, it's very, very easy to bend this way. Okay? If I take and turn it this way, it becomes really tough to bend. I can't bend it. I might be able to buckle it, but I can't bend it. Right? So the only thing that's changed between here and here is its orientation. I haven't changed the material. I haven't changed the cross-sectional area. I haven't changed the weight. All I've changed is orientation to go from here to here. That orientation, the stiffness is due to that, is reflected in the term I. Now, one other thing I want to um, talk about before we go too much further is curvature and where the stresses are positive or negative in the beam. I've got another example here. This is a beam uh, cut out of some heavy foam rubber that was originally part of a uh, floor pad, I think, that I salvaged out of the trash can. Um, I've painted some lines on it. This horizontal line is the goes along the elastic axis or the neutral axis. If the, uh, both names are correct. The elastic axis or the neutral axis is the line joining the centroids of the cross section. It's the point along the beam at which the normal stresses are zero. And the other thing I've got is these vertical lines here that show you some representative cross sections. Now, if I put this uh, uh, beam in give it negative curvature, bends like this, 
you can see these uh, cross sections right here are farther apart on the top and closer together on the bottom. So the top is in tension and the bottom is in compression. If I put it in positive curvature, the exact opposite happens. The top gets closer together, those lines get closer together, and those lines get farther apart. So the top is in compression and the bottom is in tension. Okay. Now, the material, the elastic modulus of this material is very, very low. And you can see that because it's heavy, it can't even support its own weight. Okay, so it sags that way. Flip it this way to drastically increase the area moment of inertia, and the deformation goes way down. Now, it still can only barely support its own weight, but look at the difference between there and there. That change in, there we go, that change in deflection is due only to the change in area moment of inertia. All right, so back to the problem now. We know that's 10,000 psi. Y is the distance from the centroid of the beam to the, the place where uh, stresses are going to be highest. So what we're trying to do is go from the center of the beam, the centroid, to as far away from the centroid as we can get. Well, in this case, that's here to the outer edge, either positive or negative, and that'll be two inches, half the cross-sectional height. Okay. Now, I, area moment of inertia. I for a rectangular section is 1 12th times the base times the height cubed. Now, we've got a hollow cross-section, so it makes sense to... Uh, there's, there's two different ways to do this. We can divide this edge up into little boxes, or we can find I of the outside here and subtract I from the inside. But we can treat this inner uh, hollow part as a negative area, and it works fine. It's uh, easier to do that way, so that's how I'm going to do it. I'll call it I total here for right now. That equals I of the outside minus I of the inside. Okay, That's, think of this as a positive area and that is a negative area. So 1 12th times 4 inches, which is the base, times 4 inches cubed. That's the height. Minus 1 12th times, now hang on a second here, the width here is 3.6 inches and the height is the same. It's not 3.8. My students do this a lot. Or sometimes they only subtract the wall thickness once. As you go from here all the way across, you cross the wall twice, so you have to subtract wall thickness twice. So 4 inches right there minus twice 0.2 inches is 3.6 inches. Okay, so there you go. One other thing I want to point out. I'm tracking the units through here. Now tracking units is might seem like kind of a clunky thing to do, but it's very important. I insist my students do it and I strongly encourage you to do it as well. If you track the units through the problem and at the end of the problem the units are correct, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. The numbers are likely to be correct. If you go through a problem and the units are wrong, then the numbers are definitely wrong. When you don't track units, you give up a very valuable tool for checking your work as you go. If you track the units, you're going to get the right answer more often. Okay, so let's work this out quickly. First part is 21.333 inches to the fourth. Second part is 13.997 inches to the fourth. And that works out to 7.33 six five inches to the fourth. 